Hey everyone, it's Chrissy from Everyday Survival Gear, and today I bring you the review of the Thorfire TG06S. Uh, so this light was sent to me at the same time as I got the other Thorfire light. Um, so it's taken a while, so uh, we'll get into it. Um, actually, Thorfire said that they were only going to send me one light, so I'm not sure why they gave me this one too, but I'm not complaining. It's another light for another video. Um, so basically, you can buy it from Thorfire for 22 Australian dollars on Amazon now, or um, 17 US dollars from Thorfire Direct. So it's a fairly cheap light for what you're getting. Um, it's a TG06S, as I've already said. The S stands for the upgraded version. Um, this version comes with the uh, neutral white emitter. So it's got a very nice tint. So if we pull it apart, we'll see what it comes with. Uh, you get two spare O-rings. Uh, you get the light itself uh, with the clip. And you get the instructions. So pretty simple package. You don't get too much overall, but you get all that you need, uh, basically. Alright, so we'll just run over the specs. Um, so the TG06S, uh, it's an EDC style flashlight, so uh, it is made to be used every single day, um, as EDC stands for. Um, basically, uh, it runs on either a 14500 lithium cell or a standard AA battery. Um, I probably wouldn't use alkaline, I'd probably go with something like a NIM, because the NIMs can um, output more current than a standard alkaline. Alkalines will start to sag at like over about 1 amp when a NIM can happily put out up to about 10 amps actually they're pretty decent um, so yeah as I was saying we'll run over the specs it uses a Cree XPG2 R5 uh, so you can see it there you can see from the uh, phosphorus layer that it is fairly um, fairly colored so it does look fairly yellow so the tint is uh, neutral white on, on, on this emitter uh, it actually seems a little bit warmer than a neutral white to my eyes, but when we go outside, you guys will see what I mean. Uh, yeah, so it uses uh, either a AA or a 14500 battery. Uh, the size is approximately 96 mils in length uh, and 21 mils in diameter on the body. Uh, it weighs only 37 grams, so it's basically, without the battery, about half the weight of a standard S2+. Plus. And then because the, uh, the S2 Plus uses uh, 18650, um, you'll have to add in a little bit extra weight for the uh, bigger battery too. Um, it works by a towel switch, which is a reverse clicky. I don't know how well you guys can see that. But that's the towel switch there. Got no battery in it right now. Uh, made of aircraft grade aluminium alloy. Uh, and high efficiency reflector lens. Um, if we have a look here, uh, you can see it uses a SMO reflector and a glass lens. Um, the glass lens doesn't look like it's AR coded unfortunately from what I can tell I can't really see any hue there can you guys see any sort of hue mm, nah, it looks pretty clear to me it doesn't really matter that much because it's not outputting a monstrous amount of lumens anyway it's only doing about 500 rated by Thor fire um, so if we have a look around the light um, you can see it's got a stainless steel clip uh, which is a reversible clip so it can either fit on this side or it can fit as a normal clip too uh, depending on what you like. If I try and take it off, it'll be pretty tough. I'll try. I'm going to knock the camera. No, I'm not even going to try. Um, I'd rather have it front facing anyway, so it can sit on my hat. Um, it's just much easier. You can see the knurling patterns there. Uh, pretty standard for Thor fire. Um, I kind of like this front part here that's kind of like hexagon. Even though it's not a hexagon because it's got more sides. But um, it gives you more grip when you want to undo the head. Uh, if we pull it apart... This is the tail cap assembly there. So it's basically like a big light that's small, if that makes sense. So you can pull everything apart and mod it if you really want to. Um, so yeah, that's a really clicky. Um, this is the threads here. So you can see the, th the threads are very well cut. Um, I did lube them myself. I put on extra lube. Um, I'm not sure how much lube came on it. I've had it now for that long. Uh, you can take off the front too. So like on all lights, the front isn't anodized, but the back is. Um, that pretty much also, that lets you know like if you got it on the right way around or not. Um, that's the driver board there. Um, the one thing that's a bit weird is that it doesn't have a spring. So, you know, you can add your own spring. Um, I'm pretty sure Thorfire went in that route because they couldn't actually 
fit the spring in and then a normal cell. That's what I would be saying if I had to guess. Uh, so you will have to use button top or raised cells. So my two cells I've been using in this light are the uh, truss fire and a standard any and a standard any loop. So you can see they're both uh, button top cells. Um, I think the lithium is actually lighter than the um, any loop. So you can see, you know, when the battery is in there, it sits about that high. So they do actually have room for the spring, but they didn't choose to use the spring for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, with the any loop, you can see, I think it's a little bit less space with the any loop, actually. Uh, but, you know, if we close it up, whoops, we'll be able to see that it works perfectly fine. Alright guys, now we'll run over the uh, output with the 14500 and the modes. So basically it's got, well, five modes, but one of them's hidden. Um, it always starts on high, so there's no memory mode. So um, that's going to be a loss for some people, but for some people they won't mind also. Because it's an EDC light, um, it really depends on what you do with your EDC. See, I don't mind mine starting on high. So, you know, we can cycle modes. And we'll turn it off. Turn it back on and it'll be back on high mode. As you can see. Um, so we'll run over the modes with the 14500 battery. So high mode is 500 lumens rated by Thorfire. Medium mode is 200 lumens rated by Thorfire. So I should say high mode is 500 lumens by Thorfire for 35 minutes. Um, of course that's with step down. Uh, medium mode 200 lumens, 1 hour and 15 minutes. That's also with step down. Uh, low mode is 50 lumens for 3 hours, moonlight mode is 1 lumen for 72 hours, and strobe is 500 lumens for 35 minutes. Um, and then if we go to the AA, um, high mode is 150 lumens for 55 minutes, medium mode is 80 lumens for 2 hours and 15 minutes, low mode is 20 lumens for 8 hours, uh, moonlight mode is 0 0.5 lumens for 120 hours, and uh, strobe is 150 lumens for 55 minutes. So you can see the modes are um, actually very well spaced. So we'll try it. Actually, I've got any 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 loop in here, don't I? Whoops. Uh, it does appear to be a little bit of PWM, but not on high mode, only on the lower modes. Um, we'll change the batteries around and we'll see how it goes with the uh, 14500 in it. All right, guys. Now we'll try the uh, TG06S uh, with uh, 14500 in it. Um, keep in mind, this is an IMR cell. Uh, it's a regulator driver, so I don't think the IMR cells are really going to make a difference. You could use just about any cell in here and get a good result. Uh, so we'll turn it on, always on high mode. So not too bad there. Uh, high mode, 500 lumens. Oh, I didn't even double click, I only clicked once. Then we got um, medium mode, which is 200 lumens. Then we got low mode, 50 lumens. Oh, I must have said that the wrong way around. And that is our moonlight mode. So our lowest mode, which is 1 lumen, they say. Um, it actually does appear to be pretty bright, uh, more than 1 lumen, but we'll have a look when we go outside. Uh, we'll turn that off now. Alright guys, so we'll just run over the last specs. Um, it's got a uh, peak beam intensity of 12,000 CD max. Uh, which gives it a distance of 100 meters. Um, it's impact resistant to 1 meter because it will be using a boost driver in there. So um, I'm not sure how well the board is constructed. Like I'm sure it's fine. But I wouldn't go like smashing it around way too much because these boost drivers, uh, they are a bit touchy. Uh, what else? Um, IPX8 underwater to 2 meters and uh, spare o-ring. That's pretty much all the specs there. So I figured um, we'll take all of these lights outside. They all run on um, 14500s also. Um, pretty much the same sort of setups. They can either run on 14500s or double A's. Um, these beam shorts are going to be pretty long because I'm going to put a uh, NIM inside all of these and a 14500 and compare them. Alright guys, uh, now we're outside with the Thorfire TG06S on high mode. So you can see it is uh, super bright for such a small and compact light. Um, if we shine it here on the car or on the chair, you can see how um, neutral white the tin actually is. We we'll go to the tree over there, you can see it. So the tin isn't like blindingly white, it is actually 
a neutral white tint, maybe even like a 4500K, I would say, if we look on the grass. Well, what's left of the grass that's summer here now. So this is a high mode, which is 500 lumens, rated by Thorfire. You can see it does more than enough for such a small light. Um, so at the end there, I showed you guys uh, all those lights put together. Um, basically, I was just trying to show you the sizes of the lights. Um, you know, this light is a little bit bigger than the rest, but it is also the only light there with a rear clicky switch. Um, which is a bonus because you know you don't have any issues with lockout so like you're never going to run out of battery because it's mechanically locked so you're never going to have a drain cell because the side switch is using um, power to stay stay on so um, that's also a bonus there uh, we'll change modes uh, next mode down I think is medium mode which is I believe 200 lumens so you can see even on this mode still more than enough light um, it's actually starting to get really windy here right now. This wind just came out of nowhere, but it's been such a hot week that it's actually really welcomed. Um, the light is starting to heat up a little bit. Uh, in my hand, I can feel it. So, uh, next mode is low mode, which is 50 lumens. This is low mode, 50 lumens. Uh, you can still see it on the camera. Oh, looks like it's going to start raining soon. I can feel the droplets just when it came out. So that's uh, 50 lumens there. Uh, you know, to the shed, you can see it does a really good job. Uh, we'll go to the lowest mode, which is moonlight mode. So you can see it's on, you can see it on the shed, but it isn't like all that bright. But it's not supposed to be all that bright. But um, I still think it's a lot brighter than the um, one lumen that they say, because you can see it all the way over there. That's the other lights there. You can see all the lights that are bright outside. Um, now I guess it's time for some comparisons. No, no, actually, first we'll put the NIM in, and then we will do the kind of comparisons. Alright guys, this is the Thorfire TG06S uh, with the NIM in. Um, yeah, so you can see this is the high high mode. Um, 150 lumens, rated by Thorfire. Uh, you know, you, you can see it does like more than enough to light up my whole backyard. I can see pretty much everything here perfectly clear. Uh, we'll go next mode down, medium, which is 80 lumens, rated by Thorfire. Starting to get like fairly dim, but if we go somewhere a little bit closer, like to the bin, you can see it still does a really good job. Uh, next mode down is 20 lumens, which you know, you can see it is fairly dim, but it is working. And next mode down is uh, moonlight mode, which you guys cannot see working unless I shine it on that white bucket there. But in my hand, you know, you can see it working fine. Um, now I'll put the uh, lithium ion back in and we will compare it to the other lights. Alright guys, so as uh, usual, Thorfire TG06S to the left. Um, and then to the right we've got the uh, Jetbeam Jet MK1. So you know, you can see output wise they're fairly similar. The Thorfire actually looks brighter, it actually outshines it kind of a. Eh? But um, more importantly, you can see the tint difference. So the... Um, the Thorfire is a lot more neutral white tint, very big tint, tint difference there. Uh, and also, um, they're both using uh, Cree XPG2s, so they should be pretty similar tints. And it's starting to rain, but we'll keep the show going, even in the rain. Um, next up, we'll grab the uh, Kolaris and see how it does. Alright guys, that's the uh, Thorfire TG06S on, uh, to the left, and the Kolaris MI7 to the right. So as you can see, it's now raining fairly heavy, but uh, we'll keep this show going, strictly because when I first started the channel, uh, it always used to rain on me, and I didn't mind. So although I am probably about three, four years older now, I'm trying not to be as soft. Uh, it is actually getting very, very windy, so uh, we'll see what happens. Whoa, that's pretty heavy rain, but... So you can see a uh, pretty similar output, actually, but you can see a very big difference in the this is why you don't wait till 3.30 in the morning to uh, do your beam shots because it could start raining any minute. Alright guys, so uh, Thorfire TG06S to the uh, left and uh, Rofus TR15 to the right. As you can see right now, it is raining extremely heavy and I am absolutely soaked. But uh, more importantly, we get the uh, review done because this is the first uh, beam shots of 2018. So um, yeah, 
Um, you can see a very big difference in tint also. Um, output wise, they're actually fairly similar. There's not that much difference in um, output, but tint wise, there is a very big difference. So, you know, the Forefire, even though it's only rated at um, 500 lumens, don't be put off by the lumen out output because you can see it holds its own against all these, all these lights. You know, I can take the uh, rain, but now with the wind because I'm soaked, oh, it's getting bad. <laughs> All right, guys, it just started raining like that heavy that like this box got completely soaked within the few seconds that I was out there. And then like my lithium ion, ion container too, that got soaked. So uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna stand in the shed and change the batteries around and then we'll head back outside and uh, finish off the review, I guess. All right, guys, so this is the Thorfire TG06S with the NIM on its highest mode. Uh, the way it always starts so the rains um kind of stopping and going um, I did get absolutely soaked. I kind of got to go toilet now, but yeah um, And then we will compare it to the uh, jet beam jet mk1 and the rains coming back so sweet So jet beam jet mk1 there to the right and uh, four fire TG 06s to the left. We'll cycle the modes on the four fire so you can see output wise uh, the jet beam does appear to be a little bit brighter but I don't actually think it is I think it's just the tint difference because they are both rated at, uh, at 150 lumens but you can see they both do an outstanding job uh, with NIM batteries um, next up I'm gonna keep the video rolling because uh, it's a bit cold soft day eh? soft soft effort probably like you guys in America I've got like minus because it's snowing there now this thing won't even start. Give me one second. Okay. I just clicked on. Mm, what's going on with this Kolaris now? Okay, so that's the Kolaris MI7 to the... Uh, why is it turning off? Eh, I might have to check this out for a sec. Alright guys, we are back. So, as usual, on the left is the Thorfire TG06S. Um, and to the right is the Kolaris MI7. So I think this time around we can see the Kolaris is clearly brighter, but it is rated at about 200 lumens brighter. I don't think there's any way that's 200 lumens brighter, but it is a little bit brighter uh, than the um, TG06S. I don't know what happened before when I tried to turn it on, it wouldn't turn on. But um, all the batteries got a little bit wet in that rainstorm. So yeah. Um, next we'll put on the um, Rofus TR15 and see how it does. Cycle modes there. Oh, it's the biggest one in my pocket. Heaviest light too, actually. Actually, that's fairly bright. All right, guys. So TG06S to the left and uh, Rofus TR15 to the right. So um, yeah, uh, if you put them on the floor there, you can see they are fairly similarly bright, similar brightness. But um, I think the Rofus might just have it. It's a little bit hard to tell. That's the uh, TG06S. And that's the Rofus. I don't know, it's a little bit hard to tell because of the tint, tint difference. I might just cycle modes on the, um, on the uh, TG06S. See, now they're side by side, it looks fairly even. But it is really hard to tell because of the tint difference and the different beam patterns. Oh well, I'm not sure. Uh, one thing we didn't actually try was 200 meters if the TG06S makes it. Alright guys, very last test only because I forgot and we can't leave without it. Uh, 200 meters. Oh, it makes it. No way. Can you guys see that on the camera? It actually makes it to 100 meters. So I was thinking, you know, the peak beam intensity of 12,000 CD is probably wrong. But seeing as it actually makes it to 100 meters, maybe it's not. I'd have to work it out. Maybe they meant 1200 CD, I'm not sure. Alright guys, uh, this has been Chris from Everyday Survival Gear, I'm trying to fix up my camera because the tripod just fell over with the camera on it. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I just got off track there. Uh, so, alright guys, uh, this has been Chris from Everyday Survival Gear, bringing you a, uh, apparently I'm a storm chaser now, uh, bringing you the review of the uh, Thorfire TG06S. Um, you know, overall, it's a great little light. Uh, you know, if you don't want to uh, EDC uh, 18650 light, but you still want something that's bright and reliable, uh, for sure, check out the TG06S. Uh, and um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, like and subscribe. And thanks for watching, guys.